All right, y'all, what's up? We're back here for another garage install with a trusty free labor assistant here. Today's adventure is gonna take us on installing some more cooling mods to the car. We keep trying to enhance the cooling in the Type R. You know it's notorious for overheating. We're gonna continue with the 2020 front end. We went ahead and ordered it, got it PPF by the people over at Aeroworks. If you're in the SoCal area, hit them up. These guys are the gold standard when it comes to doing any type of PPF, paint correction, you name it. When it comes to the exterior of their car, they got it. Anywho, so we had the front grille PPF'd. We had the eyelids PPF'd. I even had the red badge PPF'd. I will go ahead and list all these part numbers in case any of you want to order them for your car. It's quite simple. They're quite readily available. Also, we got plugged up by our boy Chico FK8. He was getting rid of his Greddy oil cooler. I went ahead and swooped it up for a great price. It's practically brand new. I also went ahead and got some wire mesh. Again, I'll list all the items that we are picking up for the car in case anybody wants to do it. And we also picked up from DEI some fire sleeves just in case you never know when it comes to oil and heat. You'd never want to take a chance. This will also help insulate the oil lines. Again, further improving the cooling in the car. Grady already supplies you with some. This area here is gonna go right below the catted, or actually not the catted, but the downpipe. This is gonna go right in that area. But again, I wanna take it a little bit further on both sides. Again, better safe than sorry. We're not gonna get into the specifics of the, the removal of the bumper. If you guys wanna watch how to do that, I got two links down below again that you guys can look up. One is mine when we went ahead and did the uh, PRL intercooler. We went ahead and gave a little detailed instructions on how to take it off. And also my boy, Misa Patos. He is the owner of Illustrious Auto. He goes through on how to take off the bumper lickety split. We're actually just gonna jump ahead right about now. Boom, we're back, bumpers off. All right, y'all, we're, we're in full force here. We've already removed some of the screws. I'm gonna go over which ones need to come out. This guy needs to come out. This one needs to come out. There's one here, so there's already three on one side. Exactly the same amount here, here, and here that need to come out. We're also removing this piece here. Some people haven't removed it in some of the videos that I've seen. We're just being precautious and removing this piece and you're gonna see why. You can see these two screws right there? Those are holding up the grill as well. So we're gonna remove those. Once we take that off, this will come off. Be careful with these tabs here. These tabs are fairly janky. And what I mean is the bumper area is pretty thin in this area. Sort of like the clips that go here that always end up breaking like uh, the dealer did to mine here. But anywho, we won't get into that. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. That should take off the 2019 grill that I have, and we'll start installing the 2020 grill. We went ahead and removed the grill off of the bumper now. As you can tell, it's fully off. Now, word to the wise, there's this piece right here where his finger's at. That piece, you can see it there slides in here I don't mind this bent tab here again when the dealer swapped out my grill many moons ago when they messed it up you know they were nice enough to uh, break this clip on here as well but all these little entry holes here 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 and there this bottom one all along the edge all hold the grill in place, as you could tell. There, 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 and right where his finger's at. Now these weren't too hard. I just kind of lifted them up a little bit and pushed out. You don't really gotta do too much. Again, the most important thing is lifting it up, removing it off this clip here, and all these little tabs that you see up here on top. See these that line the top? have to come off and you have to be very careful because they actually 
are in these little holes right here. All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and install the emblem, the front emblem on here. Remember that the front emblem is not the same size. If any reference helps, it is the rear emblem size. Now, you wanna make sure, see those two little little tabs, little, little locking pins you wanna almost call them? Those go lined up there, kinda gives you a point of reference. You only get one shot. Now, I also wanna tell you guys that when you go to Honda and you order this emblem, you see these little locking pins here? Those things do not come with the emblem. You have to buy it separately. Now, I don't think it's gonna fall off because it's pretty strong 3M tape, but you do wanna make sure that you get it just so you can secure it. And the orientation of how it's gonna go, just to let you know, is just like that. You see how the nipple's facing you? Best direction I can give you. That's how you're gonna insert it. So you're gonna insert with the nipple pointing at you, flat side goes towards the emblem. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put these in. These are one time shot, so make sure you do it right the first time. Just like that, boys. That's it. Okay, we went ahead and finished that. Now we're gonna put in the Type R badge. Just remember that the Type R badge comes in two pieces. Type is one piece and the R is the second piece. Now I don't think there's any kind of order to it. We're just gonna go ahead and do it right now. For these, they have similar holes like the uh, front grill as you could tell, but there is no, uh, what do you call, there's no locking nuts that go into that one. For those you just line up, put it in, you should be good to go. And as reference, I'm not sure if the limited edition and the regular uh, edition Type R's have uh, different color badging. I know that the rear Civic and Civic Type R emblems are a darker gunmetal on the limited edition. This looks pretty dark. It looks just like the regular 2019 edition that I had. But that's it. Super easy, super quick. You know, everything goes on nice and smooth. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the grill back onto the bumper and we'll get going with the installation of the oil cooler. All right, everyone. Gone ahead and finished up the installation of the 2020 grill. I know it's grimy. Our fingerprints are all over it, but once we're completely done with the install, I'll give it a nice little wipe down. But uh, just to give you some reference, this area is a lot bigger compared to the 2017 to 2019 editions. This gives us a little bit more airflow coming in. We also lose, unfortunately, the little grill uh, hole that was up here. We lose that because this went up. Now, I don't know if that's a benefit or a negative, but I know that this will help with giving more air into the condenser slash radiator that sits behind it. So this should be a win for us here. Besides, it kind of look like the uh, smaller emblem on the grill compared to the larger one. Kind of like this. Looks a lot cleaner to me. Looks good. We're gonna move on. All right, everyone, we're proceeding here with the installation of the Gretti oil cooler. I do need to make a note of a couple things before we get to this installation process that we came across. That the instructions that Gretti gives you are great, but they just fail to mention a few things. Our installation is gonna go a little bit different. A, because Chico FKA, he had this mounted on his car already. He specifically gave me the instructions not to remove these hoses because they're already positioned on how we're gonna need to put them in the car. So if anything, I'll give you like a mental note. So if you are planning on installing this to your car, that's the orientation you're gonna need. These uh, hoses will tuck underneath and through there. So he already, had, he already had it on his car and the positioning was perfect. So I'm not gonna go ahead and move that or deal with any kind of realignment. It might make it easier, it might make it harder. I don't know, we'll find out as we go. Another part that 
I have to let you guys know that Greddy does not tell you in their instructions is you have to remove the one of the intercooler support brackets. And what we found out is that right here is a bracket that goes right here. There's a little rubber grommet that you slide it in. He'll show you real quick. And it goes just like that. Now, we pulled on it, we moved it, and the only thing when we pulled on this that moved was that little rubber grommet that's right there. The intercooler, the piping, charge pipe, nothing moved. And as you can tell right there, there's already another area where it's being supported. It's being supported down here. So I'm not really worried about it. Once you remove that and you put in the shroud, it actually slides in, no problem. It gives you no issues. So it gives you no issues and it actually mounts up perfectly. And the only thing left to do is as you can tell right up here in this upper corner, right there, we're gonna have to self tap it. So that way it taps into the front reinforcement bar. Other than that, I don't see any other differences yet with the instructions versus us putting everything together. We're just mocking everything up before we start our installation. They don't really give you any real instructions on how to uh, make the holes necessary here for ventilation. But we're gonna go ahead and, and use a Dremel. Once we mock up where the uh, oil cooler goes, we're gonna mark, mark up some slits here so we can go ahead and cut them out and use that mesh that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and tie it all down and make it look nice and pretty. But right now we're all in the mock-up stage of the installation process and I'll keep you guys going as we move forward. All right, but so we just went ahead and grabbed two 10 millimeter bolts, inserted them in the hole. They look to be pretty good. Now we're just gonna go ahead and line up where we're gonna tap with our drill first, make a pilot hole. And then I'll use the self-tapping screw that's uh, included with the Greddy kit. I'm pretty sure it'll probably work, but I just wanna make sure I don't strip it. Another note is this piece will come off during the installation. It will come back on, but for the sake of room, you gotta remove these two. So you remove this bracket, this slides off. Then we're able to install the oil cooler here. And at that point, we can go ahead and proceed. Just do a little, small little hole here. Make it easier on the self-tapping screw. All right, done with that part of the install. Again, we took two 10 mils, three eighths, socket that we needed again we did a pilot hole with the drill bit and then we went ahead and used the self-tapping one just to make it easier on it so we didn't strip it out anyway we're gonna keep moving along we're gonna now go ahead and start i think removing this part now we're gonna go ahead and remove this bracket that you see here and remove this thing out of the way so we can start uh, mocking up the uh, oil cooler we can cut out the uh, ventilation holes for the oil cooler again. There's one more down in this area. It's quite tight. You can see it's super easy, slides out. So three mounting points. One, two, three. We are gonna remove this third bracket, just again to give us, uh, I mean, third bracket, this fourth bolt here, so we can get some room, remove this bracket, and we can start doing what we need to do to the oil cooler. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide in the hoses in. He's gonna get underneath here. And that way I'm also gonna show you what else we are removing. According to the Greddy instructions, the bracket that I just previously showed you, they didn't remove the bracket, but we went ahead and did to give us extra room in here. Now, we're gonna go ahead and slide these hoses in. Now inside of here, 
there's like an electrical harness or something similar to this right here and we're going to get go ahead and either slide it underneath it or over it just to eliminate any type of marring or anything as time goes on from driving the car and As I was saying, I'm just gonna try and position this guy where it needs to go so you guys get a better idea of how we're gonna mount this thing up. Is there enough? Wait, Wait, okay. All right, everyone, we got the oil cooler secured. Nothing's real tight. Again, we're still mocking everything up, making sure everything fits right. Because these oil lines, they're pretty stiff as they are. But look at the spacing you have to work with. Now, making sure that these fittings align right. Because remember, you have one here and you still have another one back there. I mean, I can't even see it. It's back there. I mean, you see the second hose over there. Again, I think the way to do it is you mount, you, you you screw in your lines, you leave them loose. So that way you mount this up, make sure the lines are positioned right so they're able to slide back there and through the hole that I told you we were going to put them in through. And then you unbolt it, tighten everything nice and tight, and then you go ahead and finally secure it. The way we mounted the bracket was we first did this guy here, left it loose, and then we mounted it up here. At first we had tried to mount this uh, triangle piece first, but we weren't lining up down here and it made it that much simpler to just do it here first and then tighten up there. So far we ran the lines underneath and I'll show you how that looks in one second. This is the area that I'm talking about where the hoses come out from. They slide through. We're making sure we are test fitting everything, lining everything where it should. Now these hoses will be zip tied to this shroud area here. There are already holes in the shroud. As you can tell, we didn't make them, they already come there. And that's where we're gonna zip tie it. Those are per Grady's instructions. I am still going to do the flame sleeves on here. Again, we're just test fitting everything, making sure everything works good. There's the sandwich plate that he's working on at the moment. We also went ahead and tested out the oil filter because in Grady's instructions it says that you need to use their oil filter. I was kind of worried about that. I think the oil filter that Grady supplies is smaller. And if you guys are familiar with the HAP oil filters that were back in the 90s for the B16s, they're a little smaller. And I think by them being smaller, they create a, a little bit more oil pressure and helps out VTEC and whatnot. Now, I don't think it's necessary. Time will tell, we'll see. Everything's moving along pretty easily. Now, if you notice on the sandwich plate, there are two nuts right there. If you see those, you can use those for oil pressure and oil temperature. Gretty in their picture has those sensors installed. You can do that if you want. We're not gonna run it. After about 20 to 30 minutes of struggling to get this sucker on, we finally were able to get the return lines uh, screwed in right now. Now this did take quite a bit of messing around with. Uh, the best way that I could say that we were able to get this on, because it is a pretty tight fit. I think in hindsight, I would remove this plastic shroud because it was beating up on my hand without the glove. This plastic piece under tray area might need to come off to give you the, the extra space because as you can tell there's quite a bit more space in here. We didn't do it that route. What we did is we loosened this uh, washer up. So first we put the sandwich plate in. We, loose, we, we left this thing really loose so that the sandwich plate moves up and down and we're able to start with the furthest uh, return line first. Once I did that, then I was able to do this one 
This one was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Again, little maneuvering with the lines and just kind of trying to get the line to, to kind of do a bit more of a 90 degree -er. because as you can tell, these uh, fittings are spot on. You know, you don't want any leaks and you don't want to force it. That's the number one thing. If you're not getting a good, uh, you know, torque or a smooth, you know, torque, as you can see, this, this is smooth here. Uh, start over again. Don't force it because you're going to strip it out and the last thing you need is an oil leak. Now we're going to tighten these up again. We're going to make sure that these fittings are all nice and tight. You know, we're going to tighten this up. I believe in uh, a video I saw, it said to tighten this up to about 30 pounds of torque. I'm going to double check that and I'll let you guys know. But I think it, it is because uh, Greddy doesn't tell you how many pounds of torque to do it till. And as you can tell, the, the lines run in this direction. And then they make their way through this area here. You can see the blue of the oil cooler back there. All right, all right, all right. We got this all set up. Did take a minute. Uh, best thing to say to you guys is to give yourself some play here in the sandwich plate. We had this thing pretty loose. I mean, it's still loose. We haven't tightened anything down, but we left this thing pretty loose so that way it can slide up a little bit, up and down. I mean, literally you need to have them perfectly on in order for them to start threading. And the first thing you wanna do is don't force it. Make sure that the thread is spinning nice and smoothly last thing you need to do is to strip it and then you're going to cause a bigger issue for yourself we're going to make sure that all these fittings are nice and tight before we actually you know plug this thing up here's the orientation of the oil lines and if i can get the camera in there you can see that they slide through and into the oil cooler i am gonna zip tie them I'm gonna zip tie them to themselves here. And I will use this plastic shroud, like I said, to zip tie it here. And then probably another one up over here to this bar. That way there's no, not a lot of movement going on. We'll probably put something in the way here so it doesn't do it. Or actually once we zip tie it, it'll, it'll probably be out of the way. But anywho, this is where we're at right now in the install process. I would say we're about 80% done with the oil cooler. All right, folks, we're all done here. Everything's all buttoned up. We're about to start the car. I just wanted to show you guys how the fire sleeve looks once installed. Now, DEI includes the wrapping tape. I went ahead and added the extra wire just for security, but this is what it looks like. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna zip tie these hoses to this bar just to make sure that they don't move and to keep it away as far as possible from this hose like i was telling you before the previous owner told me the reason this is here is because this was rubbing up against that line right there so this would rub up against here and eventually it started to kind of mar it and he had to replace it just to be sure it didn't burst on him well i just want to make sure i don't get it near it which is why i'm going to zip tie it to this bar and I'm also going to zip tie it to here to here. Just to, again, some more added protection, making sure all these things don't move. Now this is kind of close. So if you have a PRL uh, charge pipe kit, you may run into this. We also made sure that we had enough clearance, which there's pretty good amount. I mean, it's about almost a finger uh, thick, which should be good. But again, once I zip tie everything, everything should be nice and secure. All right, everyone, we're all set here. We're all done. 2020 grill is on in full effect, looking super clean. Don't mind all the nasty fingerprints. Car's gonna get a nice little wash tomorrow morning. But as you can see, way more opening in there. Accents, the car, it literally looks really good. Everything looks nice and shiny again. You can see in here the Gretti oil cooler. I honestly thought you'd be able to see it more in here. You kind of can, as you can see it through the grate here. Now this is 
the Gretti uh, vent as well. I did not cut these out. So the Gretti kit does come with it now. I believe with some of the people that bought it early on did not have it. You had to buy it separately. But now the kit comes all together, which is not a bad price because if you look at it, the HKS kit is more expensive. Yes, it does have a scoop, but it does not come with this and you have to cut this out yourself. Again, just a minor, minor heads up. We had to, I don't know if you could see it back here, but we had to fully cut out the plastic uh, liner. I know you had seen like I had these, you know, three little lines in here. Uh, the tire was hitting it. So in order to avoid any issues, I just went ahead and completely removed it. All right, everybody, bumper is on. Oil cooler is running amazing. 2020 grill went in without an issue. Everything lined up perfectly, as you could tell. Brand new eyelids look super clean. Little facelift for the Type R. Not to mention nice functional area where the airflow will now flow a lot better. Hopefully feeding the Spoon Sports radiator a lot more fresh air when we're on track. Combined with the uh, Gretti oil cooler, we should have some nice lap times and we should be able to stay out on track a lot longer. Again, I want to tell everybody we did go out on a little cruise just to make sure that the car was running great. We ran it without a bumper. We made sure that there were no oil leaks. Everything was properly tightened. So far, so good. We decided to go ahead and put the bumper back on. We went out on the actual road. We took it, redlined it, you know, a couple times here and there. We ran it for about two miles. Just made sure that we built up some oil pressure just to make sure if there was gonna be any leaks, we were gonna find them. And knock on wood, so far so good, everyone. I'm super stoked, super happy with how the installation went. Again, I wanna appreciate everybody for clicking, watching. If you stayed this far in the video, thank you very much. Appreciate all the support. Once again, we will keep updating what we're doing to the Type R. Our next event that we're gonna try and do is a doghouse event out at, I believe it's gonna be Streets of Willow in February. That'll give us the perfect time to go ahead and data log this and make sure and see what kind of oil temps we have compared to the previous times we, we visited streets. And we'll see if the oil cooler is worth the money, or as they say, is the juice worth the squeeze. So again, folks, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for clicking. Thanks again for subscribing. Appreciate all the loyal watchers. And again, I wanna thank everybody who hits the like button and leaves comments. And don't forget to hit the bell. I know that's all in succession, but I appreciate that. We'll see you guys soon. And again, don't forget, you can always reach out, ask me some questions. I'll go ahead and link as much information in the description. That way you guys know what we did when and what we encountered when we did this oil cooler grill upgrade and a little of the little of the other things that we took care of the car once we had it up on the jack stands. So thanks again, folks. We'll catch up with you. See you out on the track.